All right, in this video, we're gonna replace the uh, starter in this 1996 Evinrude. If you've watched my other videos, I actually replaced this starter um, 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, but I didn't record it. So I actually had to do a little research to uh, remember how to do it. Uh, but these are the parts you'll need. Uh, this is the starter. Um, that's the part number. Looks like this. You're gonna replace the uh, gear on top here with the gear uh, from the existing starter. There's a little split ring, so you're gonna need some split ring pliers or C ring, whatever you call that C clamp thing. Uh, this is actually the problem here with my existing starter. So they actually sell a rebuild kit for this. You can rebuild the brushes. Uh, you take out these two screws right here. Uh, and you just disassemble the entire starter. That's where they screw in on the top. And you can put new brushes in. Now, I don't know why you would ever want to do that because the housing usually corrodes around here, you'll see on mine. And um, it does come with this stud, the nut, and the isolator uh, washer here. This is the positive, this is the negative. And the only thing that prevents current from running through the body of the starter is just this little washer right here that's it uh, but anyway uh, for the money i mean a new starter is about 150 bucks the rebuild kit is i think 40 bucks i mean why wouldn't you just replace the whole thing the other thing you might as well replace the solenoid while you're in there um this is the solenoid i'll show it to you on the motor this is actually the old solenoid because i started by just replacing this uh, and then realized that it was the starter, not the solenoid. So anyway, let me get the cover off and I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, so what's happening is the starter is turning very slowly. I'll, uh, I'll show you here what it sounds like. Uh, hold on. Uh, here's how this thing comes off. The Bendex is up in here and the Bendix uh, on this motor is fine. Um, it's a real pain to get to. You have to unscrew and take off the entire top and it sits right in here. Uh, there's a gear on the starter and then there's a larger gear that sits at the bottom of this housing and that larger gear uh, uh, ramps up the RPM to throw the Bendix up into the flywheel, which the flywheel is right here. And uh, that's what engages and then that's what starts the motor. So unfortunately, uh, when you replace the starter, it's got all this brand new torque, right? You do run the risk of breaking the Bendex uh, with an, a starter replacement. So hopefully it won't break. Uh, when I put it in about 10 years ago, I, I greased it uh, very good. It's completely sealed. And uh, we'll see if there's any uh, corrosion or just how clean this gear looks when I pull this apart. Uh, but hopefully it's fine and I don't need to replace the Bendex ever. Uh, but to replace the starter is unbelievably simple. It's three bolts and a bunch of electrical connections. And then I'll also show you how to replace the uh, solenoid, even though this has already been replaced. Uh, you'll be able to see when I pull this off just how easy it is. We're actually going to have to take the strap off and put the strap on the new starter. But anyway, it's three bolts. This one, this one back here, and there's one behind this plastic plate. So the first thing we need to do is remove these two screws right here, one, two get this uh, wire, plastic wire protection thing uh, off. It'll bend this way a little bit. And then we'll be able to access the screw back here. There are two grounds on this screw. Uh, there's a ground here. This of course is the hot that comes out of the solenoid. There's a bunch of wires on the back of the solenoid, on the side of the solenoid that brings in the high voltage. And then down here on the bottom is your switching that comes from your ignition and that's you know, relatively low amps compared to the amps that are flying through the solenoid. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna double check, make sure I shut the battery switch off. Pretty sure I just did. Uh, and then um, set this up on a tripod and we'll go ahead and uh, start dismantling. Pretty good angle. Uh, first, I'm gonna take these two screws off the back. Also, um, these spark plugs, I don't know if you noticed, uh, I was showing you the motor are 10 years old. They've been in here for 10 years. I replaced them when I replaced the starter and 
Uh, I'll show you that in another video. I'm actually just going to do a separate video on spark plug replacement, even though there really isn't all that much science to it. Um, the technique I used, which was to spray them down with T9 and seat them with dielectric grease, has literally lasted 10 years. So most of the time these spark plugs will rust out before they, before anything else. Um, all right, so I'm pulling back. Let me see if you can see my hand. Yeah, so I'm pulling this wire housing back, uh, back to the thermostat so I can access uh, these bolts. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is take these out. It's a uh, half inch. Uh, Uh, these are the only two that hold the top of the starter in. Two half inch. And then the other one is uh, right here. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's got two ground wires on it, so we're going to pull that off, and you can see the starter's already moving around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this off first, just because as soon as I take this off, the starter's going to fall. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this ground off. And I'm gonna to have to take this off because obviously a new starter goes on there. So uh, this one is uh, three eight, three eighths, and the nut on the starter positive side is um, is uh, I guess I'm using an 11 millimeter for that. I'm sure it's uh, standard, but 11 millimeter fit. This came off uh, finger tight because I've already explored this. I kind of uh, reassembled it for the video. So the only thing holding the solenoid in now is the strap on the bottom, and the only thing holding the starter in is this one nut. So we got to finish taking that one out. And so what I mean, drops right out. And there's two grounds, uh, at least on this motor, there's two grounds on this mounting nut. Sometimes when it gets complicated, I like to take photographs of this before I actually remove it. Um, I did find that it's easier to remove this uh, hose right here. And the starter just drops right out, right? So here's that C. Uh, clamp that we're gonna have to remove. Uh, here's the gear and it, look how clean it looks. Um, and you can stick your finger up there, feel and freely spin the uh, larger gear that meshes with this. So if we turn this over, you want to be careful not to stretch or you know pull any of these wires out. Uh, but if we turn this over you can see these two screws here um, is what holds the solenoid in. So if you just loosen one of them, uh, you can get the solenoid to slide out. I'd have to completely remove it. Anyway, this strap holds the solenoid in, so we'll just push the solenoid out the front here. Oh, I forgot about this. Um, it's still attached here, so I might be able to just push it off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this nut off. Um, I'm not sure what size this is. It's not half inch, but half inch is gonna work.
So it's just a metal strap and uh, a lock washer. Let me go ahead and pull that off. This has a uh, rubber, rubber protectant, which is actually kind of failing. So I may wrap that with uh, electrical tape because uh, that gets actually pretty close to the housing here of the um, of this. So I think what I'll do is wrap that with electrical tape uh, because this is starting to fail the rubber thing there. Um, anyway, now we can pop the solenoid out, I think. And starter is free. So we're gonna take the starter over to the bench to replace the gear and replace the uh, strap. I will show you uh, all the connections here and it's just plug and play. You just unscrew what was there and you screw back in in the exact same way and that's how you replace the solenoid. Very simple. All right, so we're just gonna take the other side of the strap off. Ooh, that's really on there. And now we need to get this gear off. This gear sits on here very loosely. It's that C-ring, that's the only thing that holds it on. So we need to have a, a channel, channel lock. This is a channel lock brand C-clip thing remover. And of course the holes that are in it, uh, the pins that are in it are not the right size. So let's change the pins first to figure out what the right size pins are. Um, probably gonna be really little like these guys right here and yep that's them right there so we're gonna need this one uh, we're gonna need that one and this one is the same size and then we're gonna need the Allen key uh, to replace it put everything back All right, so it's really simple once you have the right tool. You uh, stick your little guys in there and then slowly spread it, slowly spread it, and it'll pop off like that. And then you just wanna grab it and be just as careful as possible that you don't fling it across the room, or in this case, into the water. So we're gonna pull this off. I'm gonna leave it on there, uh, just cause I wanna make sure that I put it back on in the same way. Uh, but anyway, so I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna just pull this off and slide it on the new one. I, I tout it matters, you know, if it, if it goes this way or this way. Um, but we're gonna put it on that way. Uh, we're gonna put it on the same way just in case. So now I'm going to put the uh, ring back in the pliers. Like that. Spread it. And let it go just kind of work it up just a little bit until it pops in place, which it did. And 
And I just want to rotate it, make sure it's seated all the way. And you can see that it is. Uh, then we're going to put the strap back on. So this goes in like this. The easier one to access is over here. So we'll put this back on. And there are no washers or anything, no uh, lock washers. Uh, this just goes right on. And this side we're going to tighten down all the way because um, it's very difficult to access this side because it's behind a shit ton of wires. Ugh. So, so that's it. Starter's ready to go back in. Pretty simple, right? So this part I do, uh, you, you really should pay attention to. Um, <clears throat> this thing, you could break it, uh, sticking it up in there. Uh, oh, first we have to put this back together. So this is the, um, rubber thing that goes around uh, it was on this way and see how it's all frayed it's very old I'm going to turn it over and stick it on there and then I'm going to uh, put this in here being careful to get the uh, gasket all in all the way around I mean maybe there's a better way to do this um, it's just the way I do it, or it's just the way I am doing it. <laughs> Hopefully I won't do this again for many years. Um, oh yeah, here's the other thing. This, this starter has these two, let me show you this real quick. These two little lips right here, these two little ridges, that's what holds the solenoid in position. So you have to kind of put it in at an angle uh, while getting this rubber thing in. And then see in the front here, it'll snap over just like that. And there we go, we're looking pretty good. Uh, so now I'm gonna put this, this one back in. And I left the tool over there. Jesus. Please stay. position and you can see how this rubber thing is all jack <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I ate a piece of bacon when I went inside you may notice how perfectly clean my hands are and they were just dirty earlier well the reason for that is because I accidentally went inside and uh, it's Saturday and Saturday is um, the day that my wife does laundry. And I do laundry Monday. And I tried to sneak a load in this morning and she uh, told me to get my shit out of the dryer. I mean, out of the washer when I went in there. Okay, here's the part that, uh, so obviously I had to wash my hands to get my clothes out of the washer. Anyway, here's the part that you wanna pay attention to. So. <clears throat> that Bendex is on a spring in here, and uh, I'm not sure without looking at it, uh, you know, what exactly is happening in here, but you can't just force this thing up in there. Um, you got to kind of wiggle it and play with it. There. 
it, it, I don't know if you heard that. It was like a, like a, a slide. Uh, don't force this. Uh, you could bend the Bendex and then you're screwed. You have to remove this and, and replace uh, the Bendex. Uh, so I'm not gonna take it out again because it's a, it's a pain, but whoop, there we go. Actually, now that it's, see how freely? There's absolutely nothing, it's not touching anything. That's what, it, that's what you want it to feel like. Uh, so we're going to uh, put these back in. And uh, I like to use this product, um, waterproof grease. It's uh, made by Corrosion Block. It's actually a dielectric grease. It works as an anti-seize. It's great for electrical connections. Um, It's great for like literally everything. Um, I like to uh, put it on there before I put the nuts in because, or the bolts, because <clears throat> it makes a huge difference in trying to get them out someday. As you can see, everything here came out really easy. Here's the other thing, when you have this in correctly, it will slide up and down uh, perfectly vertical. If it's not in correctly, uh, this bolt here will not be seated. So right now, this uh, flange is seated against the, the manifold here, or you know, cylinder sleeve that it bolts into. It's perfectly flat. This goes up and down. Uh, when it's not seated in there, as you tighten these, it, the starter will start to bend towards you. If that starts happening, stop. You don't have it in right. Um, it's really my only tip for this whole project. <clears throat> um, that's the, really the only thing that you can screw up other than tightening this too tight and breaking a bolt off. This is all aluminum and of course the bolts are stainless. Uh, so you just wanna snug, make them snug. like literally an eighth of a turn past snug and we're done okay then remember we have these two grounds that we need to put over here and you probably can't see this very well but <clears throat> there's nothing to say it's, it's it's two grounds that go over a bolt on this one I'm going to put the grease right on the bolt <clears throat> And here's the two grounds, so we'll just slide those up. There's one, and actually I'll put this one on top because it's smaller. There's one and two. There you go, see that? Stick that right in there. So I want to uh, make sure these wires don't move too far, so I'm just gonna stick a screwdriver in the way of the wires and then tighten it down, and that way <clears throat> those wires will not move. Shit. Freaking ground just snapped. Well, I'm gonna have to go find a ring and uh, put a new ring on that ground. Figures. I might as well show you replacing this thing. Figures, right? Simple job. There's now, of course, I forgot to get a battery. Christ. First thing we're going to do is cut out the bad, the 
the bad one, I'm going to cut it as high up as I can because I want to save the wire, um, save the length of the wire. And we'll strip it. too much I don't want to pull on this wire too hard I, I don't want to do anything the motors to 96 right so I really just want to be gentle and not cause more problems the uh, insulation is in surprisingly good shape I mean it's very pliable they use clearly they use some good stuff back in 1996 There we go. So all I need is a little bit, right? Because of the type of connector I'm using, I'm using a heat shrink butt connector uh, or heat shrink eye connector, whatever you call this thing. And we're gonna just turn the wire there at the end, put the connector into the crimper. I like to crimp on the red, even though this is uh, blue because I just think you get a better crimp. And we'll stick the wire in there. Actually gonna pull the wire all the way out here. There we go. Stick the wire in there. Without fraying it too badly. Okay, now I'm going to uh, heat shrink it. Of course, I forgot uh, a battery, so let me go get a battery. All right, there we go. I think it's really important to use the uh, heat shrink connectors because the glue that uh, squirts out around here um, really helps hold it together, uh, especially in this situation where, you're, where it's vibrating like crazy. So anyway, we'll go ahead and just put this back in there again.
All right, that's nice and tight, and the wires are laying in the right spot. Let me show you what I'm gonna do here. So here is that strap, right, with the, um, with the heat shrink on it. I'm just going to wrap it with electrical tape. And I just want to protect it from whatever Evinrude thought may happen. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is it arcs at some point, so it's probably an overkill. And then what I'll do is, uh, let's see, it's gonna go on like this, I think. Yeah, it goes on like that, so I got plenty of room for two zip ties because electrical tape sucks and it will unravel. So I'm going to put a zip tie on the top and the bottom here, like that, to uh, keep the electrical tape from peeling back. So, that'll work. Now we gotta take this off. Uh, I think it's this one. I'm sure you can hear the rain starting. I'm under a canopy, so just hopefully it won't get wet here. That would suck. Oops. the right way. Uh, so I'm going to squirt a little this on there, help with corrosion. Uh, this, this one uh, actually did corrode pretty badly, uh, so I'm going to put some, uh, when I do the uh, bow shield, whatever that stuff is called, on the, uh, so I'm, I'm not going to tighten this all the way because this one's not seated down here all the way, and I think I'm going to need some wiggle room, so we'll just loosen this up, and then we're going to put the lock nut on there, right there, and the nut, right there, it's down. Looks like my zip tie is actually getting in the way right here, but it'll be all right. Okay, that's snug. Now let's we'll tighten up the top one here. That's snug. And the last thing to do, as far as wiring goes, is to uh, put this ground back on here. Um, so put that hose back on. Make sure that these are not pinched, which they're not. Put the clamps uh, or rubber things for the uh, air box back on. 
and let's put a little grease here. And before I put this back on, I'm going to just uh, make sure that I've got uh, these tight. This is the positive side that I really didn't mess with. Um, I just want to make sure they're all on there nice and tight. Everything looks good. Nothing's really touching where it's going to chafe or it shouldn't. Actually, this might. So I might, I think I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this. So anyway, uh, while I'm in here, I'm going to just zip tie up some wires that are just touching the, uh, the side of the, not really the block, you know, the side of the cylinder head. So anytime I do any work on this motor, I really want to make sure that all the wires are zip tied uh, everywhere that they possibly can be, because if they're snug and they're not allowed to vibrate and rub against each other, then I'm less likely to have a problem down the road. So what I'm doing here is just feeling under there, making sure that the wires aren't touching or rubbing the sides or bottom of the solenoid uh, or uh, any other thing in there and uh, once I was satisfied that the wires are laying in the right spot uh, I went ahead and put the two screws back in that uh, plastic wire guard uh, which was really the very first step of the project. I found another opportunity for zip ties. The negative cable that comes out of this uh, wire guard uh, here that I just screwed back in, the negative cable was very close to the positive terminal on the solenoid. And of course, you know, I'm worried that it's going to chafe through if that wire rubs on the stud. So I decided to just go ahead and zip tie it uh, further away. I got it about a half inch away and I was able to tighten up all those wires uh, coming out of this uh, area here all at the same time. So uh, that's always a good thing. Once I was satisfied that all the wires are in the right place and everything's tight, I went ahead and turned the motor over a couple times. You'll hear here in a minute that it works just fine. Uh, the motor's not down in the water, so I didn't want it to actually start and I didn't prime it with fuel. So um, I just wanted to make sure it would turn over. <laughs> all right, well, that concludes this segment of Bobby's Outboard. The uh, starter starts, works. Um, these were the uh, wires here that I was messing around with. Uh, just trying to zip tie them up, keep them away from the uh, cylinder wall here. And uh, you can see I've got a little bit of corrosion here. Um, of course, these bottom plugs, uh, which get the most spray, are rusty. Uh, but the top ones are in pretty good shape, and uh, I am going to go ahead and change these spark plugs. Um, I'll actually probably just do a separate video on that. I mean, why not? It's pretty basic, but I've never done a video on spark plugs. Uh, anyway, that is uh, how to change the starter in a 1996 150 Evinrude uh, looper. 
Uh, if you don't know the actual model number, it usually doesn't matter because all of these motors uh, pretty much are the same with just some minor differences. Um, incidentally, uh, while I'm in here, you can see I uh, have cut this if you don't recognize uh, this. Uh, if yours is flat, uh, for whatever reason, uh, this one was uh, shorting out uh, when the motor would get hot. I have no idea why. Once I cut this out and allowed these wires to breathe and not be squashed, I mean, there's something in this harness that uh, shorts out when it gets hot. If everything is crammed under this uh, under this cowling here, uh, the original owner just took it off and threw it threw it away. Um, I went ahead and uh, cut it out. It does actually uh, serve as uh, kind of like a protectant for this area. I mean, I don't know. It's supposed to be there. Uh, so I bought a new one and then uh, proceeded to cut it uh, to get that uh, problem to stop. I have no idea why. If you have any idea uh, and you leave it in the notes, that would be great. And if you have any questions, uh, I do reply to all my comments. So please subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching.